Hey guys, Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today we're going to be talking about hair loss and finasteride side effects. We're going to dive into this topic here today. Before we do, make sure you hit the subscribe button, that like, and make sure you get that bell for notifications. Love to see your comments down below. We'll definitely be responding as well. All right, so in the hair loss world, right, as you get older, hair loss becomes an issue. There's a handful of different mechanisms. In other videos, I talked about the big three. Um, number one is going to be your telogen effluvium. This is going to be emotional stress. Um, you could even put maybe potentially thyroid into this camp, low thyroid into this camp. Um, emotional stress, cortisol issues. You could even see it post-viral, certain viruses. You can have a hair loss for six months afterwards. That's pretty common. That's got a, kind of your telogen effluvium hair loss. Then you have your alope alopecia areata, which is going to be more of an autoimmune or an alopecia fibrotic hair loss where you're going to have patches of hair come out, usually some kind of an autoimmune response with the hair follicles being attacked at the immune system level by your immune system to the follicle. And then we typically have our androgenic alopecia, our male pattern baldness. Women can have this too, especially if there's PCOS or elevations and androgens with, with the women, but you're going to typically see it in guys, right? Guys have about 10 times the amount of testosterone that, that women do. And so because of that, you have testosterone and testosterone gets converted to DHT. So typically how the hormonal cascade flows, we'll try to put an infograph on screen here for you guys. We have pregnenolone to DHEA and then DHEA can go down to estrogen if you're a female or it can go to testosterone and then from testosterone, it can go typically into your DHT, your dihydrotestosterone. You know, from DHEA, there's an androstenedione pathway and it can come back in, but that kind of gives you the general gist. Now, TH, DHT is going to have impacts. It's going to have androgenic impacts. Um, typically, it's more in the development of the male genitalia. Once you start to, once you're of a mature age, there isn't as much of a role for DHT in the body. You'll see it be more responsible for hair growth in the face, um, hair, you know, in the ears, back, neck, those kind of things. But it's more responsible for the maturation in utero and during puberty of the male genitalia. I mean, you can see people that get exposed or that have an alpha reductase enzyme deficiency. If they're missing that enzyme and they go through puberty, they will actually develop a micro genitalia, if you will. So the DHT is important, but once you become at adult level, uh, less important. Now there's maybe some DHT in the brain and things that could some impact some neurosteroids, but we're not going to hit in that today. So when we deal with blocking DHT, I've done simple other videos of this where we kind of talk about simple solutions we can do to knock it down naturally and as well as pharmaceutical interventions. So the big medication that people typically talk about are going to be Propecia or Finasteride, which is going to be a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. So the, the pathway that goes from testosterone to DHT, it's blocking that. So that, that enzyme, that AR enzyme blocks testosterone from going to DHT. So typically the data actually shows you actually get this 15 to 20 percent bump in testosterone. So some guys will actually have side effects of increased testosterone, which then could cause muscle and libido increases and things like that. Now, why you may have a Propecia or Finasteride side effect, I'll go into this. Most people actually don't talk about this, but I'm actually interested in the physiology, so I do. So first off, the side effects, according to many, many FDA different trials, different clinical phase one, phase two, phase three clinical trials, is around 2%. So it's pretty low. Now, why may you have a side effect when you block the, that AR enzyme, that alpha reductase enzyme converting testosterone to DHT? Why? So the first thing is, if your DHT is on the higher side, and your testosterone's low, and you go and knock out DHT, you just knock it out down to nothing. Let's say you're taking that one milligram Propecia or Finasteride tablet, right? You're knocking that systemic amount down. Well, you may not get enough of a bump of testosterone in regards to what your DHT was doing to help you. So you may, you may knock that DHT 70, 80% down, but you don't get enough of a bump in testosterone, partly because maybe you're inflamed, maybe you're still insulin resistant, maybe you are now aromatizing. Remember, the AR enzyme, that's the alpha reductase going from testosterone to DHT, but we have the aromatase enzyme, kind of AR as well, sounds familiar. Alpha reductase, T to DHT, aromatase goes T to E, testosterone to estrogen. And so many guys get gynecomastia, get mental health issues, brain fog, partly because when they bump up T, it goes to estrogen. So the big side effects I find with guys that are on finasteride, they already have low T, and then maybe their DHT's here. They, they knock their DHT down to nothing, and they don't have enough of an androgen bump to fill in the gap, and maybe even that bump goes to estrogen. So if you go on finasteride, you may want to look at get your estradiol checked. Get an LCMS, a liquid chromatography mass spectrometry estradiol version. Get your free and total testosterone 
checked as well. LCNS version as well on that. Super helpful. Now you have a good baseline. You can even go get your LH and your FSH looked at too because sometimes when you have side effects, sometimes those um, upstream pituitary hormones sometimes go off a little bit. But the big thing I'm going to see is you're going to have elevations in DHT high, right? Let's say top of the reference range, 50, 60, 70, right? Testosterone's at the bottom, let's say low 300s. Maybe for your, for your total, maybe for your free is going to be 30, 40. And then what happens is you get this drop in DHT, but you don't bump up the testosterone. The average guy's going to bump up, right? Side effect rate's only 2%. The reason why you may not is that aromatase enzyme, and you're converting that estrogen. So what can you do? Monitor, get your pre and post. What can you do? Get your NAC up. And acetylcysteine to help with glutathione, to help with the toxify and the extra estrogen. You can also add in DIM, diendol methane or calcium to glucurate. Second thing is if you're going to go do a finasteride, do a liposomal topical compounded. Why? It's going to stay mostly in the scalp. We'll see if we can put a study out, but there's a study out showing that if you do a liposomal topical finasteride, your levels of finasteride in the bloodstream are a hundred times less. I don't love the idea of blocking DHT systemically because there are other things in the body that could potentially use it. People online will say it's a trash hormone, and that may be, right? We talked about the major benefits in utero and through puberty. Once after that, who knows? Probably some benefits. I don't, I don't pretend to know at all. And so that's why if you're going to do it, I'd much rather do it localized. So then you allow some of the other neurosteroids, right? The type 2 AR enzymes tend to impact the hair follicles. The type 1 tend to be more neurosteroids. So if you're doing a finasteride propecia, topical, you're pretty good. If you're doing an Avidart slash um, Dutasteride, that's going to block type 1 and type 2 at a full 90% level. That's where the, the neurosteroids could come into play. But many people online and Reddit forums have done it without any side effects with that as well. And so if you're going to do it, topical is the way to go. Much better chance of lowering your side effects on that. Now, so we talked about the reason why. So first off is you have low, you have high DHT, low T. Okay, you'll knock down your DHT, you're still aromatizing because you're insulin resistant, you're inflamed, your diet stinks, excess omega-6. Now, any bump in T goes to E, estrogen. That's number one. Number two, you have high DHT and high T. You then drop your DHT, your T goes to the roof, and then it spills over into estrogen. Those are kind of my two suppositions of what I see as why someone would have a side effect. High T, high DHT. You drop DHT, T goes up too high. Now that aromatase enzyme causes an increase in estrogen. That's number one. Number two is you have high DHT, low T. You knock the DHT down. You don't get the bump in testosterone because of aromatization. And then you have the estrogen on the backside. So just keep that in mind. Things you can do, increase in NAC, increase in diendol methane, increase in calcium to glucurate. Ideally, if you're gonna go on these medications, get baselines, and get your inflammation down. Cut out your grains, work on good, healthy animal saturated fats. Uh, if you're gonna get saturated fats from plants or gonna get monosaturated fats from plant sources, make sure they're cold pressed, make sure they're not oxidized and rancid. Be mindful of that. And again, good, healthy proteins. Remember your hair, right? This is keratin, this is all protein. You need to be able to digest and break down protein, have good, healthy hair structure. So make sure you have good digestion. And again, thyroid hormone plays a role, okay? Put a little comb through my hair. There we go. Thyroid hormone plays a role. It stimulates the follicle to grow. So low T3 levels, or if you have an undiagnosed Hashimoto's issue, could impact your hair. And last but not least, if you're coming into this and you want to still work on the DHT mechanism, but you don't want to go on a medication, what can you do? So again, my favorite things to, DH, to, to drop DHT naturally, I like reishi mushroom. You'll probably have to do it two to three times a day. Reishi mushroom in vitro is shown to be very helpful against DHT. A lot of other great benefits, so I like reishi, Okay. Number two, saw palmetto. Take it orally at least twice a day. Do a topical on your scalp at night. The issue with DHT is you could look at your DHT in the serum. It could be normal, but you could still have elevations in scalp DHT. So unless you're getting your scalp tested, which unless you're in a research setting, they don't do that. I've looked. Um, you won't know if you have elevations in scalp DHT. So saw palmetto will modulate it systemically, right? It will modulate it. It's a fatty acid. It has a beta sterol in it, so it's going to lower it systemically. Again, you don't see any side effects with it. So when you use herbs and fatty acid nutrients, you don't get major side effects. The big side effect we saw palmetto, you don't even see gyno. You primarily see tummy upset. Again, there are a very small amount of patients that will be very sensitive. 
I've talked to prescribers that have prescribed AR blocking drugs for decades, and they can only think of a few people that really came back with significant issues. And so start off with Sa Palmetto twice a day. Do a liquid extract, right? Really important. Take it orally twice a day. Second, topical at night. Rub it, massage it into the scalp. Hit the big Norwood areas, right? Hit right here on the sides. Hit in the front. Go back, put it in the vertex. Massage that in for 30 seconds to a minute. One, it's going to block the DHT, but two, it's also going to block the receptor sites that DHT binds into. So you get two mechanisms working when you do it topically. I recommend you not just do oral. Do oral front and back, topical at night. That gives you a pretty good bump on that. Um, again, if you feel the need to go to a medication, I always recommend topical liposomal first because the reason why we have side effects on the medications, like I mentioned, high DHT, low T, drop that, this doesn't come up, or we have high T, drop DHT, spills into E, okay? But in general, 100X less finasteride in the blood when you go topical, so if you go topical, go liposomal on that and work on the estrogen detoxification pathways, your phase two detoxification pathways. So here, anything else? So we talked, oh, cur curcumin can also be very helpful for blocking um, DHT. Some nutrients like selenium and zinc, again, to what degree? They're not gonna be as strong as a medication, so it really comes down to how genetically sensitive to DHT you are. That's where it comes down to. That's why I'm not super like anti-medication. I'm just, hey, do the more conservative, natural things, reduce inflammation, get nutrient density up, get building blocks for carotene, get biotin, use natural herbs and compounds to lower DHT, lower inflammation, increase blood flow, do all the natural things. And then if you need a medication, then you can be on something that's gonna go less systemic and at a lower dose, because some of the, the dosing for some of those medications show that microdosing can be very, very effective, right? 0 0.2, 0 0.25 milligrams of finasteride is, has 80 to 90% of the AR blocking effects as a one milligram capsule with, with less side effects. So let's say you're at that 2%, you may even be able to tolerate a finasteride at that 0.2 milligrams because the dose is so much lower. And then if you go and you look at getting it compounded topically, now you have something that you may not have been able to use, now you can use it. Or you just come out of the gates because you're younger or your hair loss isn't significant and you go to a topical saw palmetto and an oral and you monitor, you take pictures. And then if you have to go to a medication, you do it because you're, you're monitoring it. Remember, you got about 100,000 hair follicles. You typically will not notice that you're losing hair till you lose about 20 to 30,000 hairs. That's a lot of freaking hairs to lose before you notice it. So take pictures monthly, quarterly, that way you're on top of it. And then also, um, then many videos, but get the microneedling involved there. That's gonna be another key aspect. Get some red light on there. And then you can also add in a, a good cleaner version of a, a minoxidil to stimulate that antigen phase. I hope that makes sense on the finasteride side effects, who benefits, who doesn't, and how to mitigate the side effects if you wanna go forward. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed. If you did, again, put the comments below. And if you wanna dive in deeper, if you have hair issues or gut issues or thyroid issues that could be impacting your hair, click down below, reach out and schedule with myself. All right, guys, Dr. J signing out. Have a good one. Bye.